in the history of human civilization. Do I believe in the God that you believe in? Yes. Okay, that's probably what I was guessing. Um, is that the Christian God? Catholic. Catholic, does that mean Christian? Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, every time I hear someone say, that God, I ask, I ask people, what is, what is God to you? They say God is good and God is all powerful. And, okay. So then, you know what happened? This happened in the 1700s. The city of Lisbon, Portugal. 1755, I think was the year. If I'm off, I'm off by like three years. Lisbon, Portugal, one of the holiest cities in all of Europe. A Catholic city. All Saints Day, one of the holy day, holier days in the Christian calendar, back then especially. Everyone was in church, worshiping. That morning, there was an earthquake. And that earthquake, what buildings are most susceptible to earthquakes? The tallest, biggest buildings. And this is 1755, one of the tallest, biggest buildings in Lisbon. The churches. So, that morning, 80,000 people died in their churches from the collapse of the domes, the walls, and what That's followed the, the earthquake? Are you the one? Guess You're what? Recording. A tsunami followed the earthquake, basically wiping the city of Lisbon clean. Okay. That was the beginning of what we today think of as the modern atheist movement. Because at the time, people said, if God is all loving, how could he have possibly done this? God presumably controlling the forces of nature. We're not talking about man's inhumanity to man here, which would be the consequence of free will. We're talking about nature. And so people at the time, led by people such as Voltaire, asked the question, if there is a God, and we had this tsunami that killed 80,000 people and wiped out a holy city on a holy day, collapsing churches onto people's heads, then either God is not all powerful, or God is not all good. If we define good by being interested in your health and longevity, that's a fair definition of being good, I would think. And so that, that created an entire philosophical rift in the theological community, and people parted ways at that time. So when I look at the universe, and I see asteroids coming down to strike and rendering species extinct, I see forces of nature that would just as soon have us dead or extinct. I don't see the goodness in the world that people speak of. And am I, am I being selective? I, I don't think so. A tsunami hit Indonesia, a quarter million people died. An earthquake hit, hit Haiti, a quarter million people died. This is nature killing us. I've joked about it. I said, if another earthquake comes, we should get the hint. The earth is trying to shake us off. You ever see a dog, like, shake after it's wet? It's like, earth, say, get off. Humans, mess. So, when people define God in that way, I don't see the all good part. I see some good, I see a lot of bad. Nature trying to interrupt my health and my longevity. So now, that being said, half, nearly half of all scientists are religious. They pray to a God, half of all Western in America. So being a scientist does not make you not believe in God. Nearly half. Here's the difference. The scientists who are productive, who are also religious, do not use the Bible as their science reference. The Bible, they've removed all, they, and they use the Bible as a source of their spiritual fulfillment and enlightenment. And they draw a line in the sand. And Galileo said this first. Galileo, a religious Catholic man in Italy, he said it first, he's reading the Bible, and he's got it, but then he invents a telescope. He, 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 he builds a telescope, best one ever. 
And he's looking at the universe and says, this, this doesn't match up. And so he comes up with the phrase, a brilliant phrase, in a letter to a friend of his. He said, apparently, the Bible tells you how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. <laughs> so he, he drew the first line in the sand between how you might relate to your religion if you're going to live in a physical reality. And so my issue has never been about religion and society. I never talked about it. I mean, I mentioned it historically and what forces interplay. But we live in a free society where we tell ourselves that. And our Constitution is written in such a way that the government can't tell you what religion to be. You can be whatever religion you want. And you know what guarantees that? It's because our Constitution, ratified in 1789, makes no mention of God at all. A controversial fact at the time. How could you found a country with no mention of God? It's because the Founding Fathers were afraid that if a government establishes a God, that you will not have the freedom of religion that the Constitution promises. So the only way to guarantee that is to remove God from the Constitution altogether. Actually, God appears there in a very in a trivial way. God There's one mention of God, but it's not in any way that you would think. Did you know where it appears in the Constitution? Yes, it did. It's Anno Domini, 1789. That's where it's God. Constitution. So, so my point is that the uh, so because of that means so you have the freedom to worship whatever you want. Now here's here's where the rubber hits the road. I, I have to go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> between how to go to heaven and how the heavens go. 